Hello and welcome Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, loyal subscribers, and new people. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today in this video, we're going to be discussing building business in 2022. What's it look like? Some tips, some gems, some do's, some don'ts, some misconceptions, things to be aware of. And I have my special guest and friend, the Zero Debt Coach, Brad Long. Bring him on right now. How you doing, my friend? I'm well. How are you? Good to see you, man. It's good to see you too. Um, let's see. We connected a couple, about a month or two before FinCon 2021. So that's where we uh, we connected in the Facebook group, I believe. I think I reached out to you or you reached out to me. I forgot which how it went down. You you reached out to me. I reached uh, out to you. We, right. And yeah. Uh, and we, we we set up a, a collab before attending the event. Um, we go and we collaborate at the event. We we went to uh, like a Spanish restaurant, right? We had some food. We networked. We had a fun time. We enjoyed ourselves. We learned a lot regarding the FinCon event itself. Some some things that we like, some things that we didn't like, and uh, we're now in. 2022 and it looks like there was more things we liked than didn't like because we're going back right to fin <laughs> right. so i'll see you there again it's going to be exciting I, I have learned some do's and don'ts at this particular type of conference so i think right. this time around i'm gonna get a little more value out of it because i know what to expect at this point i think it was really overwhelming the first time but now I kind of know what to expect. Um, today's video is not really focused on that event. Rather, I want to talk mostly about how business has been for you. Growing a business pre-COVID, in COVID, and now slowly, gradually working our way out of, you know, COVID environment and lockdowns and mandates and, you know, in-person events coming back, right? We're, we're seeing yeah. some certain states move much slower than others, you know, depending right. on where you, but overall, you know, with traveling and just, I'm seeing more people get out there, more people wanting to do business in person, things like that. So if you can give my audience a little refresher on, on who you are and your YouTube channel, what you do, what you focus on primarily, and some of the things that you've been working on in your business that has been working well. Awesome. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me back, Denzel. It's always good to connect and just do a little bit of a mind share about where things are in our businesses, sort of where they're going. Uh, I started as uh, the zero debt coach back in about May of 2018. I started off as a blogger and very quickly within, I'd say about a year and a half or so, discovered the um, the benefits of video and the popularity of video um, and really forced myself to get over my camera shyness and started my YouTube channel. And um, so I'd say for probably about the first three and a half years, I was solely focused on personal finance, you know, just kind of like the basic blocking and tackling organization, budgeting, expense tracking, debt elimination, investing, and then financial independence. That's really kind of the continuum that I kind of help my audience move toward. And through that time, um, you know, obviously 2020, the pandemic hit and that um, was really an interesting time because I had already left my full time corporate software sales career to start, uh, you know, doing this full time. So I started in 2018. I was finished with my corporate software sales career in November of 2019. So uh, the timing was really interesting for me. I just launched my first digital product. And so it was, uh, it was a very good time for me. I was really focused on growing my email list. I was focused on developing my brand. I had only been on YouTube for about six months. So I was, I was in the beginning stages of learning that whole skill set, how to shoot videos, how to do thumbnails, how to do all the the titling and, and all of that stuff that you get into with that. So, um, you know, fast forward through the pandemic, I mean, my business continued to grow consistently, not as quickly as I wanted it to. But this is, you know, if you're if you're getting into or thinking about getting into online business, uh, especially content marketing online business, it never goes as fast as you would like it to go. And I think it's important to be really honest and upfront with people about that. But it does work. And so what I found is that I kind of reached a point with, and I think most content creators do, I reached a point with my personal finance content where I was like, you know, I feel like I've said just about everything I need to say with this or everything that I want to say about this. 
And simultaneously, I was really starting to get a lot of interest from my audience about, okay, how do I start and grow an online business? Or how do I start this as a side hustle? Or how do I start a coaching practice? Being a financial coach, I have a lot of financial coaches in my audience, also in my private coaching uh, membership as well. And they were starting to ask a lot of questions around this you know, online business juggernaut. And in my mind, I, in, initially I was like, oh man, there's so many other people out there doing this already, you know, sort of imposter syndrome as we like to talk a lot about uh, kicks in and it's like, well, who am I to do that? There are already like a thousand other people, a million other people more qualified than I am. Uh, and it just really helped me understand what I also teach that, you know, imposter syndrome is something that you're always going to have at every level of business that you're in. It doesn't matter whether you're just starting or you've been in it for a while. And I'm sure that Denzel can, um, can vibe with me on that. Uh, and so what I did earlier this year is, you know, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to start a second brand. I have zero debt coach.com and that's got all my personal finance content on there. I can basically help anyone that's struggling financially all the way into and through financial independence. But I started a new brand. Um, it's the website's bradlong.co. And that's basically my brand where I'm teaching people how to turn their knowledge into an online business. I'm helping them start, grow and scale uh, online businesses. So that's a big pivot that I've made this year. Still uh, keeping the Zero Debt Coach stuff running. Uh, it's still growing, but I've also added this other entity and i am it's refreshed my enthusiasm about being in online business because I was, I've was i been able to take everything that I learned in my first three and a half years in my own online business and really try to help people shortcut the process as much as possible and avoid some right. of the mistakes that I made and, um, and, and really kind of push through that. So it's interesting that we're having this conversation because I'm, I'm doing a, a work, a live workshop, uh, the day that we're recording this, which the, the replay will be uh, available as well. So it's, it's very timely that we're having this conversation. And that'll, that'll be posted on your YouTube channel or is that like a private event? It's a private event. Private um, event. Okay. I have a register, I have a registration link. Uh, if people, gotcha. I don't know when we're going to put this out, but I, it's something that I think I'll be doing probably every other More. month because there are okay. so many people yeah, coming into, uh, and there's also a mini course that I produced out of the first time that I did it. Um, I did what's called a reverse course launch, which we can kind of get into some of that stuff a little bit later on if you want to as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think you might have just dropped a little gem there and some people are going, what is that? So we'll definitely yeah. dive into that. We, won't, we won't, don't want to forget about that. So uh, just to recap here, you've got your main um, really coaching practice, Zero Debt Coach, and that focuses on what? Just kind of re refresh my audience on what that main uh, business does. Yeah, so we... So most of our most of our new students are struggling somewhere. There's some along, somewhere along the financial continuum of incredibly disorganized, definitely not on a budget, not tracking expenses. Want, they have debt that they want to get rid of. That's one cohort. The other cohort is maybe they're out of debt and they're trying to figure out how to next level some of their investment strategies and work toward financial independence. So gotcha. it's really kind of those two distinct groups. Gotcha. And one um, important nugget here is when you are a business owner you're positioning yourself as the say finance geek the zero debt coach um when you see an opportunity would you say if it aligns with the main thing that you want to be known for then it's absolutely something to consider adding into your tool belt and it's another feature and benefit another resource that those clients that you've been serving can one day someday access that next level mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. or say the clients that you've worked in year one now you've been in business over three years now four years uh it'll be September. four in september so yeah right. three and so, a half ish so those clients that say you acquired in your first year of business four years later where are those people and either they might have obviously after four years definitely on a budget may possibly even debt free most debt free um you know living below their means their cash flow positive credit scores up they got a good read on their finances how do we level up from there and that's where you saw an opportunity to add on to this new thing so being being open transparent open-minded um seeking out continuing to seeking out more opportunities in the marketplace is a great way to stay in business because one of the most important uh features of being in business is you get to solve problems and i think 
when you stop solving problems that's when revenues start to go down when you right. stop being effective that's when you start to plateau you know or that's when that maybe that imposter syndrome starts coming in when and it's just you getting ready to hit a new peak right a new level so i like that you um really brought that up dove into it uh, so let's look at a, a specific tip in regards to that pivot that you made talking about that reverse course launch is that mm -hmm. proper name yeah yeah yep, that's right how does that fit into someone who's watching they have a business you're possibly creating content you're in you're providing intangible services or tangible services or both through online business online e-commerce marketing and maybe you got something going whether it's successful or on the verge of being successful how can a reverse course launch help an existing business maybe a new um, and then maybe a seasoned business you know like four years i'm four years now um and okay. up from there work with me on that yeah absolutely that's a that's a great question and i the, the where i think i want to start is to back up and talk about webinars because a reverse course launch is essentially a webinar um it's a okay. fancy word and it's it's a sort of a a, <clears throat> a little bit of an inverted concept but so one of the things that I did last at the end of 2021 was I launched my third digital course via a webinar. I'd never done that before. Webinars were, were always kind of like, oh, that seems so next level. It seems so confusing. Do I have all the right software and all that? And the good news is, is that webinars are not hard to do at all, especially if you use a tool like Kajabi, for example, um, which both uh, Denzel and I use. But you right. don't have to use any specific tool. You can do a webinar, you know, with very, very basic tools. So don't let the tools get in the way of the concept. So the concept of a webinar is basically where you're taking something that you teach, maybe your one to one private coaching students or something, uh, a concept or a group of concepts that you teach to your audience on a regular basis. And you have some sort of, um, you know, special event that you put in place that they have to register for. Um, usually with a webinar, there's an offer at the end of it. There are a couple of different ways to do webinars as well. Uh, I'm a fan of hard didactic teaching webinars rather than, hey, I'm going to I'm going to tell you what you need to know and I'm going to kind of dance around the topic, but then you have to buy my course uh, to get the how to, you know, so what I like to do and what I recommend you do with your webinars is actually do hard didactic teaching. And then that allows you to offer the value to your audience and, and basically, uh, you know, gives them the opportunity to see what it is that you're teaching. And then if they want to buy your offer, maybe it's one of your digital courses, or maybe it's a coaching package or uh, a bundle of digital courses. There are a lot of different ways that you can do an offer at the end of your webinar. Um, but a webinar is basically something that I just, I recently sort of discovered and decided to implement. So there is that piece. Piece. The next level of a webinar is what's called a reverse course launch. And a reverse course launch is really nothing more than you taking the material that you're teaching, which you're basically teaching. And in my case, I did a mini course. I taught a mini course live. Okay. And so what you're doing is you're getting all of the elements of that set up uh, as you would in a regular webinar, but you're giving them the opportunity to purchase the recordings before, during, and after the webinar itself. So there's a little there are machinations in there, but that's the overall concept just to not get, you know, so people don't get um, overwhelmed by that. So it's basically a reverse course launch is a webinar where you're teaching the course, mini course or full course live. Uh, for example, I just did my start an online business uh, mini course, which was launched. You know, I launched that as a reverse mini course about three weeks ago. It was three and a half hours of hard didactic teaching. And then I offered the recordings to my audience, you know, each lesson plus a Q&A after each lesson, all cut up into a mini course that they can access and you know, in, uh, in, in re you know, wherever they have internet, ac internet access and consume it as a mini course. So that's the, the wow. overarching concept of a, of a reverse course launch. Gotcha. So it's, let's use me for example, I have an existing financial coaching practice one-to-one. -one. Then I have my online course, which is my, my main driver, um, has pretty much all my content in there. It's a huge course. 
and then within that course i'll do say webinars you know i do i do these private events these private q a's private workshops hot seat coaching um, yep. so what you're getting at is someone like myself if you're, if you're at my level or you have something already at play then mm -hmm. a reverse course launch would be an added on thing that could you know help boost sales boost revenues um and in 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 my mind can increase results a little bit faster for the mm -hmm. client because you're you're live right then and there and then you're selling there so the reverse course launch you're selling what you just did that's right yeah okay. and so what i would say is in your case like if you have a flagship course you know yeah. that you want to, you want to sell and especially if it's above the 500 dollars level the the prevailing wisdom in the industry is that if it's above 500 dollars, you probably want to launch it with a webinar and so at the end of that webinar you're you're offering the flagship course a, a reverse course launch is a little bit different in that maybe you take one element of that giant course yeah. that you want to go deep on and turn that right. into a mini course of some or some sort of ancillary yeah. uh, bonus material that would be in the course and you want to do a deep dive on that and then offer that in in the form of a mini course and so what you're doing is you're teaching that live you're giving them the ability to buy it before during and after the webinar uh, and it's, man, it's really, the conversions have been amazing. Like it's, it's a really, really good way because I mean, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're saying, Hey, look, you can register to the event and I'll teach you for free. You can take notes. I actually even produce a PDF. And the event note. is free or else also paid. The event is free. No, the event is free. Yeah. Make it free. I do okay. the event for free. Uh, and then if they see the value and what part of the reason I'm doing the hard didactic right. step by step teaching is because it's just going to be too much for people to absorb. And they're going to be like, yeah, I think if, if this is something that I'm interested in, I want access to this asynchronously so that I can go back to it again and again and again and again. Gotcha. So, yeah, I, I think um, this is something that I might have put myself in a bit of a uh, uh, an, uh, an issue that I've seen with some of the participation from all of the people that enroll in my course because it's such a huge course in a way little did I know I was I was selling it like everything is in here type of thing right but then the problem with that over the years that I saw was because everything's in here people sometimes don't know where to go or right. like where to start and the course I kind of designed it in a very chronological order type of a way so right anyone can you know just start at the beginning but you can also start wherever you want you kind of go in and get what you need when it applies to you That's so right. the disadvantage to that I think I've seen over the years is that some people never see the amazing resources that are in there that never apply to them so maybe they right. join for a few months they did you know the most preliminary basic steps and they they maybe got out of debt um, they got their credit right and maybe because I pitched it a certain way that they didn't continue on because they didn't really know right. that it could benefit them um, and so the way that I could probably, and I'm pretty sure there's other course creators out there that might be suffering from this because mm -hmm. I, recently, oh, I, yeah. recently, I recently learned that there is a huge uh, a lack of participation, partic participation, my goodness, lack of participation on the customers actually completing courses like online digital oh, yeah. courses. Oh, I yeah. think the, it's the, about, it's about 80, 20, I find in my, in my in my ecosystem and i think that that's pretty uh pretty normal um 20 of the people that buy courses usually wind up going through them and, and many times not all the way through them so it's mm -hmm. it's a very interesting phenomenon and it's one of the you know if you want to know how the sausage is made in online business that's one of the things that's been very interesting i know both for you and for me yeah definitely so i like so continuing on i was listening to a financial coach and she was saying how in her program she's got over 70 percent like completion rate and i'm like i'm nowhere wow. near yeah. that nowhere near right. that and and uh you know she came up with some formulas to track it and to you know increase that engagement and i figured you know what it's not that my participation is low 
I think it's just I have such a big course that yeah. it may be time to split things up, so to speak. For sure. Um, yeah, and, and, and one of the things that you could do is continue to offer it as a huge flagship course, but right. then break off break uh, off. mini course. Yeah, and um, and then you know offer that you know you know maybe offer the flagship course as a, an add on or an upsell or a bonus. Yeah. You know, it's really. I'm learning a lot about uh, offers, you know, how all of this stuff is in the offer and the way that we explain our offers. I just finished reading Alex Hormozzi's $100 million offers, which is a great book. Uh, and, you know, for anybody that's in digital marketing, online business, and it really, he walks through how to make the, the subtext of the book or the subtitle of the book is how to make offers so good people feel stupid for not buying them. You know, and uh, and it's true. I mean, you can really do that. And so, the I think the overarching theme with what Denzel, what Denzel and I are talking about right now is that online business is a there's a, there's a long learning curve. Like you you'll learn all yeah. the basic fundamentals. Okay, set up a blog, set up a YouTube channel, set up an email list, set up all that stuff. All right, you learn how to do stuff. You learn how to create content. But then there are all these next level, um, you know, insights that you get that you're never going to get until you do it. You know, until yeah. you actually get into it and you're interacting with other content creators, and you're saying, hey, yeah, this whole reverse course launch thing. I mean, I heard it from my mentor. You know, he had tried he had tried, you know, he'd done webinars for years, especially to launch his more flagship courses. Uh, and then he did this reverse course launch. And the first time um, the first time that he did one, I was like so blown away at the value in it that I was like, yeah, it was a ninety seven dollar you know, purchase and I whipped out my credit card and bought it on the spot, you know, you were in. Gotcha. so it's, it's a really, really great way to utilize the webinar workshop masterclass format live teaching uh, to leverage that into, you know, hey, here, if you're new to my audience, or you've been in my audience for a while, this is exactly what's in the course. If you think it's worthy of whatever you're charging for it, great, you're letting them be the judge of that. And it's I think it, it really elevates your credibility as a creator as well. I like that. I like that. And, um, you know, you were talking about um, business owners that try to get all the stuff, right? The blog, the channel, the this, the that. I was just having a conversation with a client yesterday that, you know, um, wor he's full time pastor, uh, leader in the church, and he is looking to build a business model that works with other churches on the tech side of things. And so we were kind of mapping out a content creation strategy to reach those other churches, number one, and two, to have some type of, you know, course, some type of service that we can put together. And one of the biggest things was us coming up with a minimal viable prototype. You know, mm. how, how do we strip all the stuff that we hear that we need at some point in time we'll need in our business but what is the minimal viable prototype to just get it going mm -hmm. and i was you know yep. explaining to this person we don't need a course day one we don't even need a website we no, don't, we don't right. need you know a whole brand and a whole logo and a whole this and a whole that take all that away what is it that you provide how do we create an offer i like, that's, that's probably the most like start there how do we create an offer and right. actually like you say you can do the course in a one-to-one -one session with someone or one-to-many, like a group. Right. And as right. long as you document the process and possibly even record it, then you have a foundation as to how you're gonna, you can relaunch all that work you did to the next group of people that eventually find your material or that could yeah. be material that you um, edit and repurpose for public viewership. And like you said, that in-depth training, people are seeing it and they're like, okay, this makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm going to reach out to this guy on the back end. You, you have an offer. So as long as you can take that person to a location, like I said, you don't even need a, a website. You just need a, like a, no. a basic landing page. You can do it with a free Facebook group. You can start putting out content you with your, yeah. your Facebook page or even your personal Facebook profile. And that's something that I recommend when my students are starting online business, because you have to really find, uh, you know, the, a profitable online business is the marriage of what you're passionate about with what people are willing to pay for. And mm -hmm. so you have to start asking your audience as small as they may be, hey, what 
what's your biggest pain point around this area or what's your biggest hope and dream around this area and as, as, as soon as you are able to start engaging with them in, in some of those types of questions and you don't have to have all the things like you said you don't have to have a website yeah. or a youtube channel you you want to make sure that there's a critical mass of interest there's not going to be a lot of interest because you don't have an audience yet but you want to just make sure that your idea is somewhat tested in in that you know sort of crucible right and one way to know too if if your pro idea is profitable if a ton of other people are already doing it that probably means that it's profitable um it's a discouragement a lot of time to new online business owners because they're like well this has already been done this has already been said this is yeah. already you know um but but the fact that a niche is crowded the the, the you know the fact that a, an online business subject is crowded means that there are people making money in that i mean there are a million personal finance content creators there are a yeah. million online business um start an online business content creators you know but that's evidence that there are people that want help with that so yeah. just keep that in mind as you're kind of getting started that's true that's very true you know the the reality is there's a uh, from what i've been able to witness like i know you said you said a million, right? And I think the re the reality is it's really not as much as you think. Like, sure, yeah. There's 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 tons, no doubt. There's tons of personal finance creators and just content creators in general. The reality is there's really not a lot at all. Like we haven't even scratched the surface yet right. of of this <clears throat> internet world, of this um, creator economy, the gig economy, and yeah. The reason why I know that I was um, watching a, a quick video from uh, Sean Cannell. Is that his last name? And yep, Think Media. Yeah, by Think Media. And he said worldwide, there's only 50 million content creators across every social media platform there is. Wow. Only 50 wow. million. That's I think. crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, and then like of that 50 million, like a very, very small percentage of people actually making money right um right and so those people though that are making money are like minimal multiple six figures so there's mm -hmm. this wide gap of certain people that have figured it out and then there's a vast amount of people that are still figuring out and it's not because their product necessarily isn't good or that right you know they haven't found the right audience or it, it it's actually they're just still trying to piece together this whole world of the internet if you really think about it we it's only been a couple of decades, right? Right. Yeah. And you've got over 7 billion people on planet Earth. And you mean to tell me that there's only 50 million content creators? Wow. Like, I didn't know that. That's like, that's that's in, that's actually really encouraging. I think another very. thing to piggyback on to piggyback on that point that you're making is that you know there's a, we have to jettison like when you're getting into online business or you're thinking about getting into online business, you have to jettison the old school mentality of that major brands have that there's only so much market share. Uh, and, and there's only so much space in the market. You know, with any kind of content marketing, influencer marketing, what you're looking to do is find your tribe, your people, that people that resonate with the way that you talk, the way that you tell your story, the way that you help them with their problems. And that's really the thing that is, is the hardest for people to overcome, especially when they're looking at stepping into a crowded niche. It's like, you know, uh, there are so many people out there that are just trying to find that right content creator. And the other piece of that is that, you know, even though they may follow you as a personal finance content creator or whatever it is that you're in, they're also following probably three, four, five other content creators and just sort of right. triangulate different perspectives and things. So you're not right. going to be the only one and that's okay. And that's a, should be really good news because you could be one of many and that's really what you want at first. And it does take a long time, you know, to, to develop, uh, to grow an audience from zero. Denzel's done it. I've done it. You know, we're still in the process of doing it. It is a sort of a never ending process, but you yeah. get to a point where you reach critical mass of, of audience and that you can start launching things and your conversion rates are going to tell you, you know, how much money you're going to make pretty, pretty regularly um, and pretty accurately. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, there's just a lot of jettisoning of that sort of closed, you know, limited mindset. Um, and yeah. I like, I like how you're, you're now, t we're now touching on kind of like misconceptions of, you know, building an online yeah. business. Yes, you can absolutely make six figures within the first year, you know, or a million or two million or however many millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is very possible, right? 
the reality is probably won't happen. So being able to set realistic expectations, you know, you can have, you know, big think, right? You know, 10 X your income. Like I, I do that too. Like I think big so that even if I fail miserably, the result is still exponential because of how big I thought in terms of mm -hmm. income, followers, subscribers, clients, results, impact, et cetera, et cetera. But setting realistic expectations where it's like, hey, instead of trying to make a bunch of money um, in, in the first year, what if you focused on actually serving your audience, the 25 followers that you do have, the 50 followers, the 10 likes, the seven comments that you do have? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was one of the main things that I focused on whenever I got a comment in the very beginning I responded to that person I said what do you need how can I help what's the next video that you would like to see imagine giving your audience the authority to dictate the next video that comes out and that one person that sees that video that you did for them and then you honor them and you shout them out they might share that video with 15 people and then yeah. you create this ripple effect and within a year or so you've got you know thousands of followers now watching and if you really you know listen more to what your audience needs think about you being in business for the next 20 years what does that look like right, right. The next 40 years what does that look like so if we can think in longer term with realistic expectations you'll not only survive the online space but you will absolutely thrive with that serve the client first help them get what they want first Yep. The money will come. Do the right thing. The money will come. Right? That's why my right. mentor tells me all the time. He's like, you just do the right thing. Open, honest, transparent. The money will come. Like money is yep. attracted to people who are serving, people who are helping, people who solve problems. Right? Money's attracted to the that type of characteristics. Right? So, um, I I want to touch on and ask you something that you tried didn't work. Mike might, might have cost you thousands of dollars um, and you know a potential pitfall that we can help the viewers avoid here we talked a lot about different little nuggets on on building your business in 2022 you know during the pandemic a little bit after now um, what's it look like different little nuggets here and there but are there is there any is there something that really like pops out to you in the last three four years that you've been in business that you're like I would absolutely not do this um, it was a, mm. it was a great experience, great learning curve. But if I had to do it again, I, I might, you know, shift it a little bit. Anything that uh, oh yeah, you can think of for sure. Yeah. So two things that come to mind immediately, and I think that this dovetails perfectly with what we were just talking about a minute ago. Um, you know, it takes. I believe that it takes a good solid three to five years to really build a viable, sustainable business. Now. If you're able to do it faster than that, that's awesome. I want to be friends with you, but I think for most people, it takes people. you know it takes a, a, a multiple years because you're learning a lot of micro skill sets. Yeah, and along the lines of that, exactly the question that Denzel is asking me, you know, what are some things that you felt like were you tried and didn't work or were fails? That's going to happen. One of the things that you're doing when you're stepping into the realm of being an entrepreneur, being an online entrepreneur, is you're stepping out of probably what you were taught in school that you can't, you know, you're not supposed to fail. You got to ace every test. Failure is not an option. Right. You know, while there are very, very solid principles to follow to build an online business, there's tons of trial and error in between all of the steps and even on an ongoing basis. I mean, I'm trying stuff all the time that I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. The biggest, um, I won't call it fail. Uh, the biggest, I guess, false start that I had initially was not getting started with video. I should have started on YouTube from the get go. I had major imposter syndrome. I was super camera shy. I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel, Brad Long, uh, you know, watch, go, go watch some of my first videos. You're welcome. I was super awkward. I had no idea, no presence on camera. It's a, it's an acquired skill that I'm still working on to to you know talk to a camera essentially and and be able to deliver content. So I, the first thing that I would say if I had to start all over again is I would start with video. Video is the best way, the fastest way to establish credibility with 
the people that you're trying to serve, to give them an idea what your process is, to show that you're a real human being and that you have experience teaching this stuff. So I would say number one video. Number two is exactly what I just talked about a little while ago was I did my third webinar and tried to do a reverse course launch, uh, my second re reverse course launch. And it was for basically a product that nobody in my audience was asking for. Mm, and okay. uh, so I, I did the webinar. The registrations were pretty good for the size of audience that I have. Um, and a good number, you know, usually the, the rule of thumb in my experience is about half of the registrants for the webinar will show up to the webinar. And certainly this was the case, but I sold two units. <laughs> So I was super deflated and super discouraged about that um, initially. Um, and, and so it took a little bit of time and kind of thought process to recover from that. Like, ah, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I'm trying to serve these people. But if, I, if I'm honest with myself, which I try to be as often as possible, um, this is not something that my audience was really asking for. It's something that I felt they needed and I yeah. know that they need. They weren't asking for it, at least in the way that I was packaging it and, and putting it out as an offer. Mm -hmm. And so the, even though that was, a, a, was a learning experience, um, you know, it wasn't a total failure cause I sold a couple of units, but right. you know, I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to multiples of that. But the good news is with anything that you're doing with content, whether it's a failed course or a piece of content that's a dud, you can always repackage that and repurpose that. I can include that as a bonus for another course or yeah. a community down the road. So uh, I just wanted to pepper what I what I'm what I'm saying in terms of failures is that there's so much trial and error. None of us knows what we're doing. Again, we, we follow, there are certain principles that we follow. You want to be yeah. consistent. You want your content to be high quality. You want to, all of those boxes you want to check. But beyond that, you're constantly going to be in the process of trial and error. Uh, and it's not really failure, in my opinion, unless you quit. You know, that's that's the only the only way that you fail is is really by by quitting. That's so. it. Yeah. And there's a quote that typically gets a negative. It sounds like a negative connotation when you're told this. But I want to share because this is something I learned recently and I think it's going to help entrepreneurs that have to develop a multitude of skills and have to constantly adapt and improve upon all these different skills. So I'm pretty sure we're all aware of when we hear someone call us a, a you know a jack of all trades, master of none, right? And that's typically a negative compliment. Mm -hmm. But the original quote is actually a jack of all trades trades is a master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one so it's pretty amazing how you know that quote was kind of the first sentence yeah. was taken out but the last one you know didn't make it for whatever reason but when we look at it right. from that, um, perspective it's actually encouraged as an entrepreneur to have different skills and use those different skills it's okay if you are someone that is a jack of all trades maybe another word for that is a serial entrepreneur i've heard that many times before and whether you're a serial entrepreneur or just you have a single business you're gonna have to develop a multitude of skills to just run that one operation and yeah you, and and i would argue it, i would argue also that um, there's a great um, book by uh, Scott Adams, who's the creator of the Dilbert cartoons, um, which is kind of like poking, poking corporate America in the eye. But he has this concept called the talent stack. And this is really, really helpful for you. Um, a helpful piece of content. He's got a YouTube channel as well. You know, our society, speaking to the specialization that you're talking about, Denzel, we're, we're really, really hyper specialized at this point, you know, in our societal evolution, if you want to call it that. Um, and, and so you're, you're, we're all, you know, sort of corralled into university and into a major and into a, a, a focus and, you know, all those different things. But really what happens, especially in entrepreneurship, is that you have to develop all these micro skill sets and what Scout, Scott Adams calls his talent stack. You know, like for him, he was a cartoonist, but he wasn't very good. He was a writer. He was okay as a writer. He was pretty funny. But when he put those unique talents in a stack, he was able to create something that was very, very unique to the marketplace. And I would argue that that's really what all of us are doing. 
with the added dimension that when you get into online business, you're learning how to create content, you know, make videos, write blog posts, do a podcast, uh, create, uh, you know, courses, learn, you're learning email marketing, you're learning how to coach. I mean, yeah. you're, there are all of these talents that you're basically putting in your talent stack. And it is probably going to take you a few years, but when you add those to the talents that you already have, that you're trying to push out into the world, I mean, it just, it really just amplifies what you're able to do in your business. And it's awesome. So be a jack of all trades, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I encourage that with some of my clients and I, and I say, you're probably going to, you're probably going to need to, you know? And so yeah. it's important to do one thing in terms of, okay, if I'm going to start a business, I probably shouldn't start five different businesses so right starting and specializing in you know in one main area but then within that you need to have these micro skills email marketing right a signature talk so you have to speak sales mm. marketing right follow-up email phone call like those are all mm. micro skills in order to deliver the full package and service to that prospect to that client yeah. so with that being said there's one more uh, don't that I have learned over the years in regards to going to networking events, business conferences, seminars, workshops, any type of in-person event that helps me build my business. And we talked about this in our previous collaboration in regards to when you go to a networking event, network. If you network to sell, you might come, you might fall short. You may turn off a lot of of the people that you meet in person if you lead with the money first it can sometimes be off-putting even though you are there to make money you are there to grow your business that implies that you need to make sales right and you need to make money but what i've learned over the years that i need to set a budget first to even attend the event and i need to come with an attitude of just networking to network to build a rapport because if i do the right thing and I help that person, the money will come. Um, when I took that type of mentality, rather than, and I still experience it today when I go to events. Someone just comes up to me, you know, 30 second, one minute conversation, they're off to the next person, and they throw their business card in my face. Um, you know, we'll, whether we're partying, let's say, let's say it's a it's a business event, and then there's like a party, you know? If it's a party, and you know, we're, we're dancing and we're, and we're grooving, um, and then as I'm, as this one dude's dancing, he's passing his business cards. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> so I think some, and I kind of was that person when I first started going to a lot of business events. Like I made sure I, if I came with 15, 20 business cards, I couldn't leave with one in my hand, right? I couldn't leave with some, I got to get them out because I bought the thousand dollar, you know, business card, uh, uh, stack, you know, the 500 business cards, mm -hmm. like I got to get them out. It's it's something I was taught to do, but then over the years I figured this is not rewarding. It doesn't feel good for me. It's not mm -hmm. reward. Um, so I took this different approach, which is just network to network to build your net worth, network to network, build, build rapport. And so I'll just leave it at that. If you wanted to add to that, if not, we can jump to the, uh, uh one more gem that I'd like to drop. And then I want to give you the opportunity to give another nugget in terms of building business. Yeah. yeah I think, uh, networking is, is definitely one of those acquired skills and you're going to, you know, like I, I agree with Denzel, like I, I had, you know, a hundred business cards at a networking event and I'm like, well, I can't leave with any of these. So, mm -hmm. um, it is, uh, it, it's difficult. I think it's easier to formulate how to help your target audience. Um, I think in, in networking events, like, you know, you want to try to figure out how to help, you know, the people that are at that event. Um, and obviously there's gotta be something in it for you as well. Uh, like with all of this stuff, I mean, you need to have good boundaries and, um, you know, and, and make sure that there's a win-win in some way, shape or form. But I think that what Denzel's saying is that, yeah, the golden nugget really is like showing up to serve the community and build a, a reputation for somebody that's awesome and helpful and you become known for that. Awesome. Awesome. So as we start to close out here, I want to give one more nugget and I want to give you an opportunity to give a nugget in terms of building business in 2022. Um, any other, you know, major tips that you can share with the audience? Um, so 
I'll just give one last one. This is something I've learned recently. I just want to share with my audience as well as your, your audience is becoming a certified business enterprise is one term for it or it might be called a small business enterprise or a minority business enterprise. This has to do with becoming a government contractor with the United States government, but in your local city, local state, local county of where you do your, your principal place of business, where that um, business is uh, located, your business address, that city that you're located in, um, there should be, I'm in South Florida, so I know it's in, in my county, it's called the Office of Economic and small business development. So I don't know if it's a different term, different use in other states, but if you were to look this up, the Office of Economic and Small Business Development, or even the SBA, Small Business Administration, will probably lead you to one of these departments. And essentially what the US government has done is they've created these, these uh, government entities that is specifically focused on building and growing small business across the United States. So again, I'm located in South Florida. I'm in a county called Broward County. And this particular department has events on an annual basis. They have uh, online workshops. They do have a YouTube channel. And so I, I recently went to their website and I started going through the process. It's a very tedious process, might I add. Some of the advantages of once you've you know acquired this type of certification is you can now bid and acquire big paying jobs or even smaller jobs that you didn't necessarily have to create a bunch of content, create a bunch of marketing. The government is giving you the job. You just have to bid on it and make sure your business is properly set up to obtain that particular job. So you're essentially a government contractor. So I'm a financial coach. If I become a certified business enterprise, small business enterprise, a minority business enterprise, because I'm Hispanic, I could essentially acquire or obtain, let's just say it's a, a, a corporation in my county is looking for a financial coach to teach their employees the importance of budgeting. Hmm. And because government job, it's you know, you can negotiate the the price point. And the only reason why you would get that job is because of the certification. So now you're only competing with a very few amount of businesses. And on top of that, if you're a small business owner and you're of a certain ethnic group, the government sets aside deals and and money specifically for small business owners women owned business black owned business you know minority owned business so and let's say you're not minority this still would be advantageous to you because you fall you would fall under a small business and i think a small business is technically like under a hundred employees right so that can you know to us that's like a huge business you know i'm I, i've got two employees myself and i got one other you know uh, an assistant and that it's going and that took me four years just to obtain another person to help me in my business so it'll take me more time to build that out so this could be a, a, a huge advantage for those that are you know looking for opportunities in the marketplace that whether it pertains to your business or not you setting yourself up as a government contractor for the US government, you're able to supply and be the third party and subcontract jobs in your local area, which you re you would receive commissions or, you know, uh, whether it's 1099 or contract pay for that particular job. So I just want to share that nugget. This is something I'm working on myself. Don't know all the details. I just know in my local area, it's called the Office of Economic Small Business Development. On a, on a nationwide scale, I know the Small Business Administration is a, a program, usually for lending services and things like that, but can probably lead you to your local county, your local municipality. Um, and that could be a huge opportunity to get certain deals, certain gigs, certain jobs, right? So I wanna pass it to you, Brad, for one last tip you'd like to share and then we'll close it out here. Yeah, mine's a little more fundamental, and I think it goes and, and basic. I think it and it goes back to um, you know something that I would have done differently uh, starting out. I really, I would have started my 
a personal brand. I would have branded myself as a personal brand right out of the gate instead of Zero Debt Coach. One of the things that I have found over the past, especially over the past year or so, is that as I'm growing in my interest and the type of audience that I can serve, Zero Debt Coach was a container that I found to be a, a little bit too constraining. And so w if I had to do it all over again, I would totally have started as a personal brand, even though, you know, nobody knew who I was. I mean, yeah. And you mean you're who name. I am now. It's not like I'm, you know, uh, super well known, but gotcha. You so were, just to clarify, yeah. you mean your name, right? Like Brad Long. Yes. Like you yeah. would, you Brad Long. Okay. Co is is gotcha. my is my personal brand and, and my new website. And so starting with a personal brand allows you to pivot to wherever you know wherever the most relevant and profitable enterprise for you to go without having to change any of your branding. So that would be my biggest um, you know piece of advice is you know, if you're thinking about starting some kind of business, some kind of online business. In most cases, starting uh, a personal brand is uh, especially in the content creation world is really I think the way to go. I agree with that. I'll I'll even say that I I did that, right? My YouTube channel is my name, so yeah. it allows me to be flexible enough to not mm -hmm. just be known for one thing. Um, right. I, I can provide a multitude of things. Like if I would have positioned myself as just the financial coach or just, you know, the velocity banking guy, you know, or if I would have positioned myself as just a credit repair expert or personal credit, then it would, it would be a little harder for me to branch to, you know, what if I wanted to be a CPA or what if I wanted to become an insurance agent or what if I wanted to get into mm -hmm. A different space i can see how that can be a little bit challenging not impossible mm -hmm. doing it right but yes if you had to do it all over again i would agree if i had to do it all over again i would stick to it i would keep my name i would you know my website would be my name and my brand would be my name you know your logo can be different and whatnot but definitely securing that name i think is key so uh great tips really appreciate your time today brad if you could um yeah. as we close out please share uh the name of your youtube channel and again your website where we can find you um to learn more about your services i'm sure like you do things that i simply don't and i think my audience can benefit if they're mm -hmm. ready to take that uh, approach on building an online business someone like yourself that's doing it and has a course has a system already in place I'm happy to yeah. send my people to you. I, I, I trust you and I know you do good oh, work. Yes, feeling is very much mutual. Yeah, so my YouTube channel is now my name. It's Brad Long. It's the same YouTube channel that I've had for years, but it's it's now my personal brand like I was just preaching a minute ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, main website is now bradlong.co uh, and that is where I teach you know online business, online entrepreneurship, uh, productivity, mindset, uh, and then my fin the personal finance side of the house is zerodebtcoach.com spelled out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. And thank you for those thank who you. Uh, watched, tuned in. Make sure you take notes, watch this, replay it back a few times. And if you have any comments, feedback, any gems, nuggets for those who are business owners, you've been in business for a few years, any do's, any don'ts, any major tips that you'd like to give please add value in the comments that will definitely benefit the whole entire um, community itself. And we'll go from there. So God bless everyone. And we'll be talking soon. Have a wonderful day.